We have learned the basics on motion graphs. Now let's do some problems to practice. Here you have a position versus time graph. It is a one-dimensional motion. The object moves along a straight line. See if you can describe the motion of this object with words. Now this graph gives you the position directly. So at the t equals to zero, the object is at x equals to zero. Between t equals to zero and one second, the object moves to negative four. And then in the next six seconds, the object moves past x equals to zero all the way to x equals to four. But in the next second, between t equals to seven and eight, the object's position doesn't change, which means the object stays at rest. And then at t equals to 8, the object starts to move all the way to x equals to negative 6 within a second. The next second between t equals to 9 and 10 seconds, the object moves from x equals to negative 6 to x equals to negative 8. So on the x-axis, the object starts at x equals to 0, moves to negative 4, and then goes past 0, to x equals to 4, arriving at 4 at t equals 7 seconds, and then it stays there for one more second, and then moves to negative 6, and then to negative 8. Now see if you can find the time interval or the moment when the object has the fastest speed, or when the object is at rest, and when the object has a constant speed. Fastest speed, that means the fastest instantaneous speed. And for instantaneous values, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So speed is the magnitude of the velocity. And how do we find the velocity from a position versus time graph? It is the slope of the position versus time graph. So. The velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. So fastest speed means the largest magnitude of slope. That means the steepest part. The steepest part of the graph is between 8 and 9. That's t equals to 8 to 9 seconds. And then we want the time when the object is at rest. That means the velocity is zero. Slope is zero. The only time when the slope is zero is between seven and the eight seconds. And then we want the time when the object is moving at a constant speed. Constant speed means it's the constant magnitude of the velocity, which means it's the constant slope. And we got different slopes, but in each of these segments, the speed, the slope, is a constant. So that will be between t equals to 0 and 1, between t equals to 1 and 7, between t equals to 7 and 8. Of course, that's when the speed is a constant 0. And then t equals to, oops, t equals to 8 to 9 seconds. And then t from 9 to 10 seconds. Within each time interval, the speed is a constant. But the between intervals, the speed is different. Each segment has its own constant speed. Now let's answer some quantitative questions for the same position versus time graph. Part A. For displacement, since the graph tells us the position, that means we can just use the final position minus the initial position for the displacement. We can read from the graph that the final position at t equals to 10 seconds is negative 8. 
the initial position at t equals to 1, not t equals to 0, is negative 4. So this gives us negative 4 meters. Part B, we want the average velocity, which means it is the displacement divided by the time. And that will be negative 4 meters divided by the time. It will be the final time minus the initial time, 10 minus 1. So this gives us a negative 4 nice meters per second. Part C, we want the velocity at t equals to 6 seconds. Velocity at a certain moment, that's the instantaneous velocity. And uh, for this case, that's the slope of the graph. So that means that we have to do the rise over run. At t equals to 6 seconds, that's a, a straight line, which means the slope right here equals to slope anywhere along this straight line. So you can use the rise over run for any part of this segment. You can do a red triangle like this, triangle here, or a big triangle. I'm just going to use uh, this triangle right here. So in this case, the rise is from 0 to 4. The rise is uh, 4 meters. The run goes from 4 to 7, 3 seconds. So this gives me 4 thirds meters per second. And then I want to graph. Since the velocity is the slope of the graph, that means that we want the slope for each segment. Each segment it has a different slope. Between 0 to 1, you got negative slope. So you have a negative slope from 1 to 7, that's a positive slope, not a steep. So the slope is going to be less than that one. All the way to 7. Oops. And then 7 to 8, no slope. Slope is 0. 8 to 9, very steep, negative slope. So it's a larger magnitude, much larger magnitude than that one. So it's going to be, say, down here. 9 to 10, smaller slope, not as steep as that one. So negative slope, and it's going to be like here. This is a 4 thirds. That's negative 2, negative 4, and negative 10.